Hi guys, the House of Commons hooligan Jonathan Gullis was putting forward a motion on Tuesday which would go further than the current illegal immigration bill. Now in this clip I want to show you, he mentioned two alarming things. One was the type of housing that he would find perfectly acceptable for asylum seekers to be placed in and second that he believes processing more people who are in the backlog would actually encourage more to come to Britain. Absurd and offensive but that's what we come to expect from Gules. Have a listen. It's important to understand that when we are talking about these blocks and I want to thank Professor Richard Eakins of Oxford University and, uh, sir, and uh, for his work with and Sir Stephen Laws Casey in helping myself and other colleagues with the policy exchange to be able to put forward the work that we have done today. Because let's not let's forget that when we talk about these hotels, it is simply not appropriate, as I say, when people are losing their jobs, it's damaging the hospitality sector, it's damaging the tourism sector of our towns, of our cities, undermining confidence in the public uh, of our ability to deliver on this policy. And there are disused army bases that could be used. I personally have no issue with porter cabins or tents being used at all. This is still perfectly acceptable. Porter cabins and tents. Tents, for example, in the middle of winter or in the middle of summer. Uh, it's perfectly acceptable for Jonathan Gullis because he would not be living in it. Now, why is he so adamant about getting people out of hotels? Because he's probably under pressure from his constituents. Why are these people being put in hotels? We don't want them in the area. And they're going to their local MP, who is a Tory, and asking him to do something about it. Now he can do nothing about it because it's the Home Office that's deci that decides. He can rant and rave about it, but the Tories, um, the, the government will decide whether uh, people are moved into hotels or not. Now they do seem to be interested in, coincidentally, moving people out of hotels and out of sight and out of mind, moving them into army barracks, which are on you know, far from populated areas or uh, there was talk about putting them on ferry boats but this approach of yeah just get them out of here um, irrespective of the conditions these people will be put into accommodation that can be used in a short-term interim measure as long as we deliver on the policy that we have said to do which is to make sure after 28 days people are to be removed to a safe third country such as so after 28 days, they will be removed, irrespective of their asylum claim. But if there's a backlog of 170,000, how are you going to process a claim in 28 days? As Rwanda, a country that is perfectly safe, and so far I welcome the fact that the UK government has been so successful in UK domestic courts to explain our world-leading policy is something that we should be celebrating. <laughs> Sorry, world-leading policy, what the hell does that mean? because ultimately this shows that this government does understand and despite the, uh, the shadow minister implementing the fact that this government is worried about whether or not it's compliant well the fact that it's winning court battles on other legislation that was deemed to be on the line i would suggest shows that this government has confidence that it will be on that side again and ultimately the honourable gentleman talks about a labour plan one that i'm still searching for other than processing people more quickly which means we still continue to accept seven out of ten seventy percent of forty five thousand would be completely unacceptable to people of our united kingdom it would absolutely drive more people into making sure that they are able to uh smugglers are able to advertise the opportunity the 70 percent success rate of coming over here and that's why wow so what he doesn't he doesn't want to bring down the backlog or in a sense he wants to bring down the backlog by just deporting people so people who arrive in the UK and have a legitimate claim they will not be processed they will instead be deported how is that acceptable now I don't think this is going to win this motion is going to win but just think about it for a moment. He's not, he doesn't care about bringing down the numbers of people who are waiting for their asylum claim to be processed. And he, he will often say, yeah, we, you know, we should be open to legitimate refugees and asylum seekers. 
But how do you determine if they're legitimate unless you process their claims? And he's not interested in processing their, claim, processing their claims. The opposite, it seems to be the case, because he's saying, well, if we process all these claims, as the Labour Party is suggesting, it encourages more people to come in in some way. Because we process, when we process the claims, 70% of people are accepted. Their claim is valid, according to the Home Office. He doesn't want that. He wants legitimate refugees, asylum seekers, deported to meet some arbitrary target. And those who are waiting to be processed or waiting to be sent to Rwanda, where do they go? They go into tents and porter cabins. Out of sight and out of mind. So that he can go to his constituents and say, see, I won. Vote for me. I got these people out of your hotels. Where are they gone? We don't care. We don't know. This is Jonathan Gullis for you. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.